Now we're in studio with Agnes Carmaus from Integrated Laboratory Systems. Agnes, thanks for joining us. So you have a session about integrated computational toxicology with in vitro assay systems. Why is this important? Yeah, we felt the need to put together a session to highlight this topic because I think that analyses and assay systems in general are advancing so, so quickly. Early in vitro assays were focused on looking at one molecular target and probing a very specific mechanism. And now we have these very advanced, multi-parametric, high content readouts that um, are giving us much more data and allow for much more complex analyses. And with that comes the need to develop computational toxicology approaches that analyze the data and provide outputs, giving us relevant information and not necessarily complex information. So it's no longer just a hairball and complex networks, but we can come up with easy and interpretable solutions um, from complex data with some of these tools. And we really wanted to highlight that for the membership of SOT. So in the session, you have a presentation. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you'll be highlighting? Sure, my talk within that session is actually focused on the H295R steratogenesis assay, which is a system in which we can look at hormone production. Um, it's a human-based cell line, and we look at readouts for the ability to induce or inhibit hormone production as a result of chemical exposure. And the readouts from this assay include progestogens, progesterone, androgens like testosterone, uh, estrogens, of course, estradiol, and even glucocorticoids like cortisol. And we take all these readouts, there's about a dozen hormones measured in total, and we can do some really nice analyses to say not only did estrogen levels decrease because of a chemical being present, but we can also come up with inferences and predictions about what mechanism we think resulted in that decrease in hormone production. And so the content of the presentation will present multiple statistical and computational algorithms that we've applied to trying to predict mechanism based on having these multiple readouts. What do you hope members take away from your presentation? I really hope that more and more people dive into in vitro toxicology and computational toxicology, not to mention the intersection of the two. I think more and more scientists are becoming not only the toxicologist, but the data scientist as well. And we don't always need to have a separate bioinformatician. We can all do this. We can all work together to not only analyze the data, but also interpret and, and utilize the results of such complex systems. So I'm hoping people will find these complex things more approachable and um, will become interested and excited about this uh, new and evolving field. Agnes, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me.